So welcome to our second event in Europe week 2021. We are full steam ahead with our virtual events. Um, yesterday, you heard a great talk from Boris Ruga, Ambassador Ruga. Today, we are having a wonderful cooking lesson um, from Victoria and Elizabeth Bergquist. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves, but I just want to say thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we will have this recorded and posted later. And if you want to cook along, please join us. We have the um, the recipe ingredients are posted on the europe.unc.edu event page. And I've also put that in the chat if you can see it. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and throw it on over to Victoria and Elizabeth. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. In, oh, I'm, I'm getting uh, subtitles there. Introduce yourself. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Hette Elisabeth, and my daughter tells me very, very what I should say and do, and then I get a little stressed. But I'm going to make mat with you today, and I thought it was very delicious. Och jag gläder mig och jag hoppar att det stoppar mig om jag det har några frågor. Ja, yeah. should I translate? Ja. Jag ska se på engelska på. Ja. Jag heter Victoria. Jag jobbar som uh, ingenjör och ska laga mat för mamma. <laughs> All right, I'll do it in English now so that you understand. My name is Victoria. I'm an engineer, and today I'm cooking with my mom. Hey, my name is Elizabeth, and I'm a stay-at-home mom and starting my own business. And tell us where you both are. Oh, we're in Fredrikstad, south of Norway, about an hour's drive from Oslo. Uh, it's a beautiful scenic city. And you're all more than welcome to come visit. My mom has extra guest rooms, so yes, I'll stay here. <laughs> just, just tell us when you're coming. <laughs> yeah, and today we're making uh, traditional Norwegian meatballs with a gravy and some cabbage. And this is typically something that my grandma would make for my grandpa, or we would have uh, around like Christmas time or confirmation no, it's just an everyday meal yeah uh, bear in mind it's a very versatile recipe for the meatballs so if you want to spice it up with some chili garlic or anything else you're more than happy to do so and uh, try to use this recipe and put the meat on skewers in the summertime and barbecue them it can be used as that as well all right I will be controlling with a second camera so that you can see more specifically uh, what we'll be doing because we're cooking, cutting here in this area. And then we also have our stove top here where we'll be cooking the, like preparing there and then cooking here. Let me know if the volume is too low, if we're talking too low. I can alternatively turn on the audio from my phone so that it's easier to hear. Right, so we're gonna start with boiling the potatoes. So the potatoes you can prepare however you want. It's really like the way that you prefer. We're just boiling them in salt water. <laughs> it's so Norwegian. <laughs> yeah, in Norway we uh, we're the country of bland food, so uh, we're uh, doing it very traditional today. But usually I would have uh, oven roasted potatoes with the uh, garlic and rosemary. But uh, as Victoria has shown you, it's just uh, plain old boiled potatoes today. And we put the water on for the cabbage. Yeah. So we're making a, like a, we're boiling some cabbage and then mixing it in with this white sauce. Uh, so we'll get like a creamy texture to be uh, as a side for the meatballs. Do you want to start cutting the, cutting the cabbage? Just slice it in the half an inch cubes. In it goes. And while that's uh, simmering, 
I'll just bring it up to a simmer and then it just stays in there until the canvas has gotten softer. I love cabbage. Cabbage is also so good to eat raw and you steal. Mm. And if you have a gluten intolerance and you don't can't use the wheat flour, you could use any other substitute just to thicken up the gravy. All right, so and then we're going to take um, our four tablespoons of butter and start the gravy. Melt it on a high heat so it gets uh, the milk solids caramelized and then it will be faster to make the brown gravy. Then we have our minced meat. I always put in the spices with the salt first because then it retains the moisture we're gonna add easily. So it's about a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg, ginger, and salt and pepper. And I just mush it up. And you can feel the texture change when the salt reacts with the meat. Here I've, I've mixed uh, a tablespoon of panko with a tablespoon of uh, wheat flour because I didn't like the potato starch. It, so I yeah, you can use normal flour, potato starch or corn starch uh, or breadcrumbs. And, and uh, some milk. I'm like uh, a little old school using my hands instead of a processor. It's just because I'm lazy and don't want to do the dishes. It's easier to wash my hands. Now we're just going to leave this a bit so the panko soaks up the moisture from the milk. Uh, now the butter the butter is melted, so that means that we are going to add our flour in the butter. This is about uh, four tablespoons of uh, flour. Can you, Victoria? Can you tell us what's going in what pot? Yeah, so uh, this pot right here is the uh, the base for the gravy. Uh -huh. Here is the potatoes that we're making, and then uh -huh. there's a pot for the cabbage. Uh, we're going to reuse this once we strain the cabbage, uh, once it's uh, gotten soft. And then this is for the meatballs, when we're frying the meatballs. Yeah, you can turn that down. So what we're doing here is that we're browning the, the potato, like the butter and the flour in order to get a, a brown, like a dark gravy. We're then gonna mix in the um, uh, veggie stock. We're using veggie stock. You can also use chicken stock or meat stock. Uh, but that after the, this mixture has gone brown or dark brown, just dark. My mom is really good at cleaning up while she cooks. I'm not. Uh, so, yeah, this is the part that kind of takes a bit uh, of time because you have to make sure that the, the gravy is uh, browned enough because you don't want a light 
gravy, you want it as dark as possible. So here we have already prepared the rest of the ingredients for the cabbage mix. So that's the same process where you melt the butter and mix in the flour, but in this case, there's a little bit of nutmeg in there as well. Uh, but we can start frying the meatballs. Yes. I'm a vegetarian, so uh, you, can, you can make this with Beyond Meat or Impossible Meat or any other substitute for meat. Uh, I've tried the Beyond Meat that they sell here in Norway. It's not very good. <laughs> so uh, I've gone ahead and bought like some pre-made meatballs because I would love to eat some later as well. So um, I'm Since lazy. The, um, the dough is quite loose, I only use the spoon to form a meatball in the bowl so I don't make a mess. And I just drop it in an oiled skillet. Yeah, and here now you can see that it's, it's browning. So put the heat down. Just be really careful that it doesn't burn. It burns very easily. And we're doing the same, we're doing the same thing like this uh, with the cabbage gravy. I guess you can't really call it a gravy. Here are the meatballs. All right, I'm gonna see if I can move. I'm gonna move the laptop a bit, seeing as now we're focusing on the area here. So maybe the microphone will be better. Does this sound okay from here? Yeah, it's working great. Yum. Ooh. And how many meatballs would you normally eat per person? <laughs> Like two or three, maybe. It depends yeah. on how hungry you are, but I would you eat maybe three. You can see how it's getting brown, almost burning. That's not good. Turn, turn the heat down on this. Oh, it looks really good. Now we're adding some water to, 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 to thicken the, the sauce or the gravy. So now you can see that because we browned the flour and the butter, we have a nice dark, dark gravy. And uh, we just have like this cube for the veggie stock. So we'll add in, add in here. You can pre-mix it as well, but we're just putting it in and mixing it here. Yeah, these are also a bit bigger. You can make them the size the size that you prefer, uh, as long as yeah, as long as they look the way you want them to. <laughs> We're still waiting for the cabbage to soften, and the potatoes are not boiling yet either. Yeah. This is this is the slow part. <laughs> we traditionally serve our meatballs with the lingonberry jam, which is a, a tart jam. And the, if you want to substitute it, you can make a cranberry sauce. Ooh, I didn't know that. Okay, what other can you make use of anything else in cranberry? Yeah, you can use um, mango chutney, mint sauce, really any any uh, sweet and uh, jam that suits uh, savory dishes. So is uh, cabbage the most traditional side with the meatballs? No, actually, it's the sauerkraut. Oh, yeah. I can show you some. Yeah, but the difference, like, there's German sauerkraut and then there's Norwegian sauerkraut, and Norwegian sauerkraut is actually sweet. Yeah, and we have. 
pre-made packages. So we can just open it up like this and put it on top of the potatoes. Oh, nice. And it'll be ready oh to God. go when we're gonna eat. So this is called a uh, seed call, which basically means sour cabbage. <laughs> I could I could post a recipe for that because that's very easy to make. Yeah, that'd be cool. You can also, uh, if you have any preferences for veggies, you can make uh, broccoli on the side or carrots or Brussels sprouts. Um, yeah, and roast them in the oven or in the pan or boil them or steam them. And now our uh, gravy is boiling. And it's gotten the desired thickness, but it also needs to boil a bit to remove the um, the the flour flavor. Mm. So I just turned it down to about middle heat. And you you make it as thick as you like. I like a thin gravy, but Victoria likes a thick gravy, so we're bit, making it thick. <laughs> <laughs> so we're a bit disputed there. And the meatballs, you can see that they're, they're starting to turn color on the edges. I don't know. We're standing with our back towards the microphone. And the, the color is starting to change and they're getting uh, darker on the bottom, but it's, it's not quite ready. It's ready when it's, it's ready to flip when you see the moisture coming out of the top. And I'll show you that in a bit. There goes the potatoes. What we can also do now is prepare the saucepan for our cabbage. Instead of putting it, we have so many um, areas available. Oh, I have to do that. Yeah. Uh, okay, never mind. But you did. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> making a joke. We'll make the cabbage in this pan, and I'll show you a quick and easy way to do it, so you don't have to use the second pan. But Victoria doesn't know about this. So this is my party trick. I love using as many pans as possible. I just added some pepper to the sauce. That's my thing. What's what's that? Mm, cute. What's the human stuff is almost another mask, but I didn't see because that's, that's your business. business. <laughs> that's your business. <laughs> I love it. Tabitha. Tabitha. So for the cabbage, do you make a bechamel sauce as well, right? With the flour yeah. and butter? Yeah, so the only difference there is that you add a little bit of nutmeg okay and some of the water from the cabbage it, when you make the when you, when you yeah you milk and the water from the cabbage to make the oh it smells so good it's amazing this is the part where i hate being a vegetarian because now i really want to eat these but i can't you can't they're all mine and it's um, since they're going to be boiling in the sauce, you don't have to worry about uh, cooking them all the way through. Yeah, yeah, so you can see that they're still a bit pink there, but that's okay. That's okay, no worries. I can't take the seat of this cabbage. <laughs> I'm going to eat some cabbage. Cabbage is still not done. 
So my mom right now is just finished with the gravy, but that's only because we have we have the vegetarian and the non-vegetarian um, meatballs. So we're gonna put the vegetarian meatballs in there for them to cook. And then once these are done, they go into this one. Maybe I should switch to the microphone on my phone. How do I do this? If you switch to the microphone, sorry, feedback. Is it better? If you switch to the microphone on your phone, um, it'll on the recording it'll pick up the what you're showing. All right, can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Put the laptop back here because it was such a nice view. <laughs> There are one meatball, two meatballs. Yeah, and it's still pink, but it's gonna cook in here. So it will be dry. I'm gonna cook the rest some more because we have so little salt because Victoria stole half my salt. <laughs> I stole them for my veggie meatballs. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should uh, share some fun facts about Norway. Yes. Anybody have any questions? Oh yeah, What's or maybe it? someone has questions. I'll ask, how's the coronavirus over there? Oh, I'm about to like, I'm so done with everything. We're in our third lockdown and we're locked down until May. So everything is closed except for pharmacies and grocery stores. Yeah, but we're doing good. Yeah, I mean, it's fine, but I wanna go shopping. <laughs> I want to go to Ikea. Okay. So yeah, there, the, there's not a lot of Corona cases here, but um, the government is being very careful with opening up because there was, uh, we had the highest amount of cases this March compared to March, like an entire year. So they were like, okay, we're shutting everything down. So that was fun. Maybe if anyone has any questions about Norway, you can write it in the chat. Oh yeah, I can I can see the chat too, so feel free. Um, what's an interesting fact? Oh uh, yeah, I think our coast, Nor the Norwegian coastline is almost it's over two thousand. Two thousand. <laughs> wait, I need to look this up. Two thousand km. Wait, how much is that in? I don't know how much that is in. And American. <laughs> about the city we live in is that it's the, one of the, the only northern Europe fortress town that has conserved the city's farmers market from uh, from the old uh, the old days. Okay, so the the coastline is sixteen hundred miles long. Ooh, that's long. Yeah, that's why we um, eat a lot of fish. We have two questions. Um, yes. From Abby D, what are other favorite traditional Norwegian foods? And then Kelly asked, what's the weather there today? Today, well, let's start with the weather because we love talking about the weather. The weather is, it's been raining a bit today. Yesterday it snowed, but today it's like 10 degrees Celsius and windy. But now it's also a blue clear sky. Uh, other traditional Norwegian dishes. Um, there's almost the same as the meatballs, but made with pork instead of uh, beef. That's very yummy. And you also put some nutmeg in it. It's a very Christmas, Christmas dish. Um, and we also eat a lot of lamb. 
especially around Christmas, um, that you boil for like, you prepare it for 24 hours in salt water. No. I, I don't know anything about this. No. She will tell you. <laughs> it's uh, the, it's a dry, dried meat that you uh, salted and dried for months. And then you water it out for 24 hours and then you steam it for about three hours. So it's just a old fashioned way of preserving food. It really smells. No, it's <laughs> delicious. No, like when you make that for Christmas, like if you live in an apartment block, everyone will be able to know that you're making that. <laughs> Funny. We have a bunch, of, here, I'll go through. We have more questions. Um, okay. Carmen asked, what's your favorite dish? And then here, I'll ask two at a time. Oh yeah, I'll ask two at a time. <laughs> and then Ryan asked, what are some of the oldest traditions that are celebrated like Yule um, or something? Um, all right, my favorite dish. I don't know. I really like Norwegian style tacos, but that's not Norwegian. <laughs> huh? Biggest cookie. Uh, yeah, medista gaki, that's the type of um, uh, meatballs with the pork that we eat for Christmas. I also really like anything that has anything to do with cabbage. Like this cabbage that we're making today is also really good. I'm not a traditionalist. I used to work as a chef, so I don't, I don't like uh, to plan so much on my food. But my favorite dish right now is um, burdek. Turkish. That's Turkish. <laughs> um, I uh, have a girlfriend that showed me how to make it, and it was really easy and delicious. So uh, I keep on going back to that. Microphone is here right here. Also, Norwegian style pancakes. They're like crepe pancakes, like French ones, really thin ones. They're really good. Um, what else is there? And also traditions. We tradition. celebrate uh, Sanktans on the 21st of June. We celebrate the solstice, isn't it? Solstice, yeah. With a huge bonfire. That's, that's, that's fun. That's yeah. my favorite one, actually. Yeah. And the 17th of May is like our constitution day. So we all dress up in these traditional dresses and we eat a lot of good food and we if you have one. Yeah, if you have one. I don't have one. My mom has one. Um, they're made out of wool, so they get really warm. And they're really expensive because they're all handmade. And then there is uh, parades on that day. And you walk past the palace. And the royal family will stand on their balcony. And they will wave at you. Um, and you all get together early in the morning for Sotna uh, Mai Frukost, which means the 17th of May breakfast where you drink champagne and you eat uh, cold cuts and have like, lots of nice bread and shrimp and salmon and uh, meatballs. I don't know, lots of breakfast stuff. How are you all doing with the cabbage and the potatoes? So I can show a bit here, Alison. I'm <laughs> sure I'm on my, we're doing good. Yeah. Looks good. Uh, our cabbage is boiling. We have, I'm using my Instapot for the gravy, which is working. Yeah. And yeah. then we're working on the sauce for the cabbage now. Good going. Yeah, our cabbage uh, is almost done. Ooh. So we have some more good questions if you're game to answer them. Yes. Well, um, I can. I don't Here's see one from Abby D. What are fun facts, differences, or rivalries between Norway and the other Scandinavian countries? Oh, oh this is a good one. Like, we always make fun of the Swedes because the Swedes are stupid. Um, <laughs> so we have a lot of Swedish jokes. Like, I can tell one. Okay, so why don't the Swedes write anything on their birthday cakes? Because they can't fit them in the printer. <laughs> Another one is like, why do Swedes pee with the door open? So nobody can see through the keyhole. I think it's a, <laughs> I think it's a bit like Canada US jokes. No. Do yeah. you have any Canada and US jokes? I mean, yeah. it might be more like our state rivalries than like Canada <laughs> and the US. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I'm well, from I mean, Alabama. We don't really and about the the Danes, we don't really say anything about the Danes. We just say that they speak with they speak Norwegian with a potato in their mouth. That's what they sound like. What do the other countries say about Norway? <laughs> Are we good? Good two shoes. Was, yeah, and that we're rich, snobby. Yeah. We have a lot of oil. Everyone drives electric cars. <laughs> we actually have electric cars. <laughs> But, but it's all true. Yeah, <laughs> it is true, sadly. And the Swedes um, are like, uh, they love to party and they drink wine and champagne out of the bottle. And we call them party Swedes. Well, isn't it a bit because <laughs> they're, they're, you can actually afford to buy the wine in Sweden? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. We, we don't live too far away from the Swedish border, about um, 30 minutes to drive and then there's these huge shopping malls where you can buy food and alcohol for really cheap compared to here uh, so that's what you usually do you go on something called a harritur and you drive all the way to Sweden and you buy groceries for like that you'll have for a few months or even a year and you save a lot of money but we can't do that now because the borders are closed Okay, so my mom just drained the, the cabbage to keep some of the... Oh, she forgot to keep some of the water. That's okay. No! And the... Oh. Okay, I'm going to add the butter to the cabbage. She's not doing it the, by the book. I'm going off piece. She's going, she's going rogue. I was not prepared. I like to do things by the by the book. I just make the butter melt around the cabbage. Good enough for me and Bobby McGee. And then I add the flour or most of it. I don't know. I have never seen this done this way before. I'm very skeptical. No, you just save a pot of mess. Um, we have one question about, um, do you have a good recipe for fiskafka? Fiskafka? Yeah, that's quite easy actually. You just buy your choice of fish. You, uh, let's say about, 400 grams of fish. I don't know. What, that's a one pound. No, what's that? One LB? Oh, yeah, 500 that? grams is about a pound. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so good. And you put it in your uh, fridge so it's really cold. And then you uh, chop it up in like squares. Dice it. Dice it. And uh, put it in your um uh, she just put the milk food, in the food cabbage. processor with uh, half a teaspoon of salt and about a cup of uh, the double cream, some onions. Just keep in mind that my mom doesn't write her recipes down, so they all live in her beautiful <laughs> head. So uh, I can share a link to a recipe. No, uh, but later the um, treat fish as you would when you make a meatball just add the spices and hmm? did the internet pause out or a break or whatever no it's good i um we have one more question but let your mom finish okay and then um, you just pulse it to so see it come together and you can add an egg if you want it to be a bit richer. But you want it to be the same consistency as the meatballs we made now. And you fry them in the same way. And you can add chives, garlic, leek, chili, ginger, freshly ground ginger. And just spice it up the way you like it. I can share a recipe with Allison later that she could maybe send you if you want. Yeah. 
Yes, I'll update the event page um, with these recipes. Uh, I know some people have been asking. So we will have this recipe on there and then I'll update with some of the ones uh, Victoria and Elizabeth are mentioning. Um, Victoria, someone wants to know, what's your connection to us here at CES? Allison is my best friend. We met. Wait, yeah, we Allison. met seven years ago, I think. What, seven? I was yeah. just jacked. Yeah. No, uh, Allison has actually been here a couple of times. She's visited me in Oslo, uh, where I used to live, and she's been here. Um, and we studied together in Germany. So we both speak like German. Yes. Um, and uh, I've never been to see Allison in the US, sadly. Yeah, you need to come visit. Come see us in North Carolina. Um, yes. And I will say Victoria's been a great friend of the center. She also got us a really fabulous speaker in the fall for our female founders event. If you came to that, we had a wonderful Norwegian. Um, she's like a tech founder. She's really cool. Yeah. Thank you, Victoria. Yeah, she's really awesome. She made yeah. this app to track your okay. period. And it's all privacy first, so sh nobody is getting your data or anything. And now I sound like a salesperson, but it's a good app. <laughs> um, now the cabbage is done. I just uh, tasted it and seasoned it once more with a little salt and pepper. And uh, just to check that it's all good. It's good. Mm -hmm. And the meatballs have been uh, um, cooking in the sauce or the gravy. We keep saying sauce, but that's because gravy in Norwegian is sauce, so it sounds the same. So, I think uh, um, it's ready to be plated now. <gasps> just One of our colleagues it. in the center, Sarah, wants to know if there's anything traditional about the kitchen or the house you're in. Is it? I mean, it's a uh, big. <laughs> I'll, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so they moved here a few years ago now. Uh, so this kitchen was already here. And this is the reason why they bought the house. Uh, my mom says that all the time because she loves cooking. So this is like a farmhouse style kitchen. That's very, so yeah, very popular in Norway. I think most kitchens are like this farmhouse style or a modern style. Uh, what's uh, traditional here? Okay, fireplace. Norway gets so cold, so we have to have a fireplace. We're not burning books right now. It's just because it's summer, it's not cold to do so we put like these little lights in there. Um, other, this is very Norwegian, having a hallway where you put your shoes. So you, when you walk in the door, you come in and you put your shoes here and you don't walk in the house with shoes. Um, we have an electric uh, lock for the door. So there's a pin code that's very Norwegian. Um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, every house needs a good chair, comfy chair. This is a really nice chair. That's traditional. Um, what else is traditional? Oh, uh, you have laundry rooms. It's not like yeah, they live. Quite we do have laundry rooms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we play golf. So we, of course, have like this little practice thing. Uh, what else? I don't think there's anything else. <laughs> That's very, Allison, what's your, like you've been here. Like, what do you think is the most Norwegian thing? Um. I think it's interesting in Norway, the houses, it's funny if you, for people who know Carborough, the houses in Carborough, if you see the new ones that are kind of like yellow or, or blue, the new ones look very Scandinavian. So like the outside, it's not like Germany where it's very brick and concrete. It's very like oh, yeah. cabiny, right? Yeah, all how, most houses in Norway are built with wood. And that's because Norway is used to be one of the, like we have a lot of uh, forest. <laughs> So they made a lot of stuff with uh, wood. There's, this is, it's actually funny because this city that we're in now, Fredrikstad, its nickname is Plankebyen, which means the plank town. And it comes from the fact that they, they there's a big river that runs through the city and they use that river to transport logs. Um, so yeah, I can show you, I can show you the house from the outside. It's very nice. They painted it from yellow to 
black. Oh, wow. It's not yellow anymore. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit cold. This is like the full experience. <laughs> <laughs> My internet might, um, yeah, I mean, there. Nice. Oh, you have a nice day, Victoria. Yeah, it's actually a very nice day. Yesterday, actually, it was, it started snowing out of nowhere. It happens every year. And every year, everyone's like, oh my God. And people had already switched to their summer tires on their cars. And people had to switch back to the winter tires because they're not allowed to drive in those conditions with their summer tires. So it was oh, pretty wow. dangerous. <laughs> Uh, we've got one more good one more good question here before we get to the food um any international food influences that become popular in norway i know your mom mentioned like burek and you can find a lot of turkish food in germany right like tacos tacos, tacos. mexican food and indian and indian food well the, ta the taco thing is very special because in norway it's gotten so we have something called fredax taco and it's a huge like marketing and like all the stores do it and everything. So every Friday, it's very common for Norwegian families to have tacos together. And it's not like the traditional, it's more like a taco salad. And you have it with, you could have it with wraps, tortilla wraps or nacho chips, like nachos. It's just anything that's Mexican and it's not with- We have the salsa and the guacamole. Yeah. But no, and they beans. do have it's old El Paso brand, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you know that it's his old El Paso that they have in yeah. Norway. <laughs> and the other brand is uh, Santa Maria. Santa Maria, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's an international one, but the good thing is that the all the Norwegian grocery stores they have their own house brands, they're very cheap and they taste just the same. So, they're it's actually really cheap to have tacos here. <laughs> but the, the funny thing is that there are not really any Mexican restaurants that like that sell tacos or where you can get proper tacos it's only norwegian style tacos i would know that allison was very disappointed the first time we had what i called tacos i love um, tex-mex and like hole in the wall mexicans <laughs> so it's hard to go to europe sometimes is it is it always like the, oh it's mm -hmm. this is the cat the sauerkraut mm -hmm. uh, the norwegian sauerkraut that we had in the cupboard and then we got the potatoes and the cabbage. Oh, doesn't this look good? I mean, it kind of looks the same. These are both cabbages. It's a tradition to boil the potatoes with the skin on and that each person decides for themselves if they want to peel them or not. Hmm. And we peel them at the table. Yep. What would you drink normally? Is there any special drink you'd have? Um, water. Who's holding water. soft? <laughs> yeah. Who's yeah. holding soft is like a mixed berry, uh, mixed berry juice that you mix with water. What else? Oh, oh, like like a shorba. Yeah, well, no, not with the, with the, cool, not with the bubbles. I'm going to show how we. Oh, yeah, my, my mom's going to peel the potatoes. And oh, can hot. you go to talking back on, oh, yeah, there you go. Let's just say, if you talk on your computer, the, yeah. um, the picture's nice. I'll switch. I'll just have to make sure that the. Can you hear me now? All right, we're preparing. Actually, I'm gonna put the. I'm gonna put it like this. There. Oh, shit. All right. So she peeled the potatoes. She cut the potatoes, putting the meatballs on. Now I'm really hungry. <laughs> Cabbage. This is like the picture perfect Norwegian traditional meal house. But I'm going to show you. We did our cabbage. Victoria. Oh, that looks so good. There's our cabbage. Burn my finger. Okay. 
Here. Ta -da, ta -da. That's the potatoes and cabbage and meatballs. Or as I like to call it, salt and pepper food. Because Norwegians only <laughs> use salt and pepper to, to season their food. <laughs> so yeah, if anyone else did the cooking, it would be awesome if you shared photos with us, because that would be so fun if there's anyone else in Allison making the food. Or if you cook this later, um, or any of the recipes, if you're inspired to cook Norwegian at all, send pictures. Maybe we should plate the vegetarian too, so I can eat. Yeah. And we're gonna do one without. Yeah. Keep the skin on, skins on, because they're so nutritious. Oh, that sound. Sorry. <laughs> So we have a question for y'all. Do you have any questions for the Americans? Um, I, I, I lived in Florida for five years. So I uh, think I got it. <laughs> what's your favorite American style food? Like which region? Like what's the best? Like what's something we have to try? Yeah, what's new? New? Yeah, I don't. What's, uh, so I'm biased and I, I might put you on the spot. My colleague Alice and I are from different ends of the country. So I think we are a fairly good <laughs> um, look at what Americans would like. I love Southern food. Like I love it. Asian food or like down home Southern. Um, what does that mean? Rinse, I don't know. Biscuits, uh, really good seafood. That's what I like. But Allison's from out West. So I don't know. Is it different? I like polenta. I mean, I love California Mexican food. This is not Tex Mex, because that's yeah. terrible. Um, <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's, it's really like, it's, like I was going to say, like a whole lot of Mexican place. Yeah. If you stumble upon, you're like, what is this in here? I don't know what this is. I'll order that. And it's it's really delicious. good refried beans. <laughs> yes. Or California burrito with, so which is basically a burrito with French fries in it. The best thing ever. Wait, a bur what? A burrito with french fries? Yeah. A burrito with french fries. Okay. Wait, is my microphone on? Can you hear me? Hold on, it might be me. Ah, speaking. This one. Did you say burritos with french fries? One second, I'm having technical difficulties. Check my There we go. Burritos with French fries. Is that what you said? Yes. Oh my god, that sounds awesome. amazing. I, I've seen it. I've seen it on TV. <laughs> we put. Uh, we put. Uh, we make kebab pizza, which is like a, a doner kebab, but pizza. So and you put fries on top of that. That's really good. Like fries on pizza. I'm gonna put our friends on the spot. Sarah Hutchison, do you want to chime in? Well, I mean, I think we're lucky because we have a good mix of different um, things, but I agree with Allison, the Southern food, the stuff that comes from the Native Americans, like we have these different kinds of corn, like, um, not just yellow corn, like green and blue corn, and you can make meal out of it and then make a bread. So cornbread for me is something traditionally American, like from the Native Americans, and it's really good. <laughs> I really love southern food and uh, grits and uh, grits. Yeah, with butter. Oh, I'm a sucker. Down in te in Tennessee, we have um, something unusual. That's fried gator, fried yeah. alligator bites, and that's mm -hmm. actually kind of delicious. It's scary to think about, but it's yummy. It also says anything authentic Mexican, fresh salsa, avocados, and then also that Thai food here is pretty popular. And that's like Thai is really good. If I if I wanted to choose something I wanted to try, it would be a crayfish boil. Crawfish boil, yes. <laughs> that looks amazing. So we do where my parents live in Charleston, we do what's called a low country boil, which is like a crawfish boil, but instead of crawfish, you just do shrimp in it. And you do shrimp and sausage, um, corn, 
potatoes and like big pieces of garlic and you just and then you dump it all out on um newspapers and everyone just grabs stuff amazing that's really good yeah what's the best place in the u.s to go if you're a vegetarian everywhere now i'd say yeah. vegetarian it's very yeah. popular here Solid bar. <laughs> sarah what would you say i'd say everywhere is pretty oh yeah abby says california so that's true yeah. Chapel yeah. Hill, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's possible everywhere now, but California was cutting edge. I've been to San Francisco a couple of times, and that was pretty amazing. So I think so they're they're good. very uh, humble and easily adjust now. I don't think that it's a negative thing to ask for uh, options. So what about in Europe or in Norway, if you're vegetarian, is that easy or vegan even? It's become very easy to be vegetarian in Oslo. Uh, other parts of Norway, they don't necessarily sell that much stuff, but I know that they've gotten better. I know that uh, uh, one of the chains here, they have their own line of vegetarian food. That's actually really good. That's where the meatballs here, the vegetarian ones are from. But we do a lot ourselves like making pâtés uh, for Christmas. If we're going to have a special meal, we'll, we'll make uh, our own uh, spreads and things that we can use throughout the holiday instead of going and buying. So we uh, soak a lot of lentils and beans and experiment a bit. And I, I quite enjoy it because I, I don't eat that much meat anymore, but uh, I'm like... Uh, flexitarian <laughs> but the restaurants i mean there's still a lot of restaurants that don't really have vegetarian food that they'll, they'll be like oh yeah we can just make this vegetarian by removing the meat mm -hmm. but they don't consider that it's made on the beef stock yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll just take the meat out not anything else they, they, they don't stand from the idea yeah but the hospital, I was at the hospital not so long ago, and they actually had vegetarian options, like actual vegetarian meatballs. That's so. nice. Yeah, so the, the government part, they're on board with the, all the options for people's choices. But I think they require to always have vegetarian options now. Yeah. If it's like a government thing. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it smells so good. So we'll show you our we're finishing up on our end i'll show you what we've got um you like ikea's veggie meatballs yes they're really good and the sausages am i showing it Ta -da. oh that looks so good the instapot worked that's yes. awesome yeah and then we've got our sandwich. yeah is the, if so if we were to eat at ikea do you think it would be authentic does it yeah all right, everyone, we'll wrap up now. You're welcome to leave. We'll stick around for a minute if you have any questions. But thanks so much for watching, everybody. <laughs>